As a parent, I spent a lot of time dealing with minor scrapes and bruises. The other day, I burned myself on my oven, and I needed help getting ointment and a Band-Aid on it each day as it was healing. It was a reminder to me that we have to care for ourselves and be honest about, about where we can't do it alone. Today, we're going to take a look at the stories of Jacob and Esau and the Bible, along with, with Glenda the Good Witch and Elphaba the Wicked Witch from the musical Wicked and how each of these see that they needed to be truthful with one another in order to find reconciliation and healing in their relationships. Welcome to worship with Westminster United Methodist Church. I am Reverend Megan Berg. I use the pronouns she, her. If you like this video, please be sure that you hit the subscribe button so that you can be notified when we upload new stuff to our YouTube videos. Our scripture for today is found in the book of Genesis, chapter 32, 1 through 8, and 33, verses 1 through 11. The scripture comes towards the end of the stories of Jacob and Esau. Jacob went on his way, and God's messengers approached him. When Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's camp. And he named that sacred place Mahanaim. Jacob sent messengers ahead of him to his brother Esau toward the land of Seir and the open country of Edom. He gave them these precise orders. Say this to my master Esau, this is the message of your servant Jacob. I have lived as an immigrant with Laban where I have stayed until now. I own cattle and donkeys and flocks, men servants and women servants, and I'm sending this message to my master now to ask that he be kind. The messengers returned to Jacob and said, we went out to your brother Esau and he's coming to meet you with 400 men. Jacob was terrified and felt trapped. So he divided the people with him, the flocks, cattle and camels into two camps. He thought if Esau meets the first camp and attacks it, at least one camp will be left to escape. Jacob looked up and saw Esau approaching with 400 men. Jacob divided the children among Leah, Rachel, and the two women servants. He put the servants and their children first, Leah and her children after them, and Rachel and Joseph last. He himself went in front of them and bowed to the ground seven times as he was approaching his brother. But Esau ran to meet him, threw his arms around his neck and kissed him, and they wept. Esau looked up and saw the women and children and said, who are these with you? Jacob said, the children that God generously gave your servant. The women servants and their children came forward and bowed down. Then Leah and her servants also came forward and bowed. And afterwards, Joseph and Rachel came forward and bowed. Esau said, what's the meaning of this entire group of animals that meet me? Jacob said, to ask for my master's kindness. Esau said, I already have plenty, my brother. Keep what's yours. And Jacob said, no, please do me the kindness of accepting my gift. Seeing your face is like seeing God's face, since you've accepted me so warmly. Take this present that I've brought because God has been generous to me and I have everything I need. So Jacob persuaded him, and he took it. A word of God for a people of God. Thanks be to God. Today we are going to be diving into these two very different stories, and yet we will find in them similarities. On one hand, we have Jacob and Esau, fraternal twins and all of the divisiveness and division between them, but also the reconciliation that is a defining aspect of their relationship. On the other side, we have the story of Glinda and Alphaba from the musical Wicked. 
Glinda the Good Witch is pitted against Elphaba the Wicked Witch from the very beginning. And it is only in getting to know one another, in hearing each other's stories and sharing together in the twists and turns of life that they come to find their own reconciliation and relationship. Will you join me in a moment of prayer? Gracious God, we come to this place and we know that there is so much before us. We know that we need to find places for reconciliation and truth in our lives, and we ask that you would walk with us on that journey. Amen. These characters come from very different stories, and yet we know that their stories hold seeds of truth for our own story. Who have you learned lessons of life and love from? Were you changed for the good because of your relationship with someone specific? Is there an opportunity for reconciliation in your life right now? Is God calling you to see the possibility of newness, of hope, of something better out of a relationship shifting or changing? The story of Jacob and Esau is a long and epic narrative that tells the tale of two of the great ancestors of faith. Jacob, nor Esau, was perfect. They were not chosen by God because they were to live out a life without error, without sin, or without anger. Rather, both Jacob and Esau come with their own flaws, their own errors in judgment, and yet each is given a deeply important role. Jacob is a tenacious and bold individual, and he has lived a life with confidence that has led him into some good and some more questionable situations. And Esau, while caring, has lacked the foresight to see how his choices would impact and affect what was to come for him and his descendants. And still God called both of these individuals for impactful and influential roles as ancestors of the Old Testament. In our other story, Alphaba and Glinda can be found in multiple different stories, actually. Obviously, the story of the Wizard of Oz was originally imagined by L. Frank Baum. It was a book I have greatly enjoyed reading with my children just within the last couple of years. That story was then reimagined into a different novel by Gregory Maguire in 1995 entitled Wicked, The Life and Times of the Wicked Witch of the West. It was an alternative version of the Wizard of Oz story and Wicked, the musical, was then a reimagining of Maguire's story by Stephen Schwartz in 2003. I tell you all this history because it's important to remember that we have this story that, not, that many, if not all of us, already know, and yet people have taken the core of that story and adapted it and changing, changed it, reminding us that no matter what story we're hearing, there might be another perspective that we're missing. The Wicked Witch of the West is fairly one-dimensional in the story of The Wizard of Oz, and yet Wicked brings to light a whole new narrative as she is given a name, Alphaba, and the seeds of her story take root. It's interesting to think of the ways that the biblical stories, too, are told from a single perspective. Jacob and Esau is a particularly intriguing one to think about, as Esau plays a role in the history and story of our siblings from the Islam tradition. I'll be honest, I don't know what this story is when it's told by our Muslim brothers and sisters, and yet, I'm sure that it's different from what our scriptures hold. What we do know from the Hebrew Bible is that Jacob and Esau have been at odds with one another their whole lives. Even in the womb before they were born, the fraternal twins struggled to the point that Rebecca went to God and asked, why are they pushing and shoving within her? And God tells Rebecca that from her womb will come two nations, and they will struggle even after their birth. Esau was born first, but Jacob was said to be holding onto his heel as if he was trying to pull him back into the womb so that Jacob could try to be born first. Glinda and Alphaba's story starts later 
in their lives. And yet from the beginning, there is that same animosity. Glinda and Alphaba initially meet when they arrive at Shiz University to begin their education. Alphaba is portrayed as a nerdy and slightly odd individual, if for no other reason than that her skin is green from head to toe. She is assigned to be roommates with Glinda, a beautiful, fashionable, and quite popular individual. Their dissatisfaction boils up and boils over throughout classroom and social experiences. If we turn back and look at Jacob and Esau, we know that their conflict does continue, as God said, as they grow up together. As young men, Esau has come in from a long day in the fields. He was tired and famished and found Jacob cooking a wonderful stew. He asked, begged Jacob to give him some of the stew, but that competitive animosity reared its head. Sell me your birthright, and I will give you a bowl of stew, Jacob tells his brother. Esau was starved and weary, so he gave up his birthright, and Jacob made him swear on it before he gave him the food. When their father, Isaac, was old and it was time for him to bless his son, as he knew his time on earth was coming towards an end, he called Esau to him. He told him to go out and prepare him a savory meal and bring it to them, him so that he could bless him before he died. Now, Isaac and Rebekah, the boy's parents, had also been at odds about the boys for many years. Esau found favor with Isaac, and Jacob found favor with Rebekah. When Rebekah heard Isaac call Esau to him for the blessing, she told Jacob to go and kill a goat so that she could make a stew for Jacob to take into Isaac. And she instructed him on how to steal Esau's blessing, going so far as to take the skins of a goat and put them on Jacob's arm so that Isaac would not notice that it was Jacob rather than Esau that he was blessing. When Esau found out that his brother had stolen his blessing from their father, he was fiercely angry and begged his father to bless him as well. But Isaac said no and informed Esau that he would serve his brother Jacob all the days of his life. You can imagine how well that went over for Esau. Rebecca and Jacob saw the anger that Esau exuded, and Esau claimed that he would kill his brother after they had mourned their father's death. And so Rebecca instructed Jacob to run away and stay away for a long while so that Esau could not kill him. But as we look at both Jacob and Esau and Alphaba and Glinda, these pairs find a way to have healing to reconcile what has been amiss and make room for something new to grow and to bloom between them. As Alphaba finds herself being laughed at by the student body due to a clothing choice that Glinda has encouraged, Glinda realizes that she has hurt Alphaba and maybe the amount of animosity between them is not going to be good for anyone. Glinda makes a move to get the other students to stop making fun of Alphaba and when they return to their room, she extends an offer of friendship. While hesitant, Alphaba too sees that sustaining their anger and loathing toward one another will not be good for anyone, and she accepts the offer. Our scripture for today is this small glimpse of Jacob and Esau's reconciliation after all the years of that discord and divisiveness. They have been apart from one another for 22 years, but Jacob knows that the situation is still ripe with the possibility of conflict. With their history, it seems completely reasonable that Jacob is trepidatious, if not downright scared, to find out that he is going to meet Esau. He sends him gifts and tries to get a sense of whether Esau is still angry with him after stealing his blessing, from their ailing father. His expectations of what this meeting will hold are not positive, and rightfully so. But Esau does not come with the anger of his youth. 
Esau comes without the animosity and the enmity that their past has created. Rather, he comes fully ready to embrace Jacob. Esau sees that while they had their many challenges, he was changed for the better because of his time with Jacob. In the song, For Good, From Wicked, we see Alphaba and Glinda in this same moment of reconciliation after their series of disagreements and discord. And yet they too recognize that the role the other has played in their life has made them better. They also realize their paths will not cross again. Listen to the lyrics of the song and see how it ties together the culmination of these stories. The recognition that we can all have people who have influenced us and changed us so deeply, even if the relationships were not friendly. I invite you to pause this video or head over afterwards. There is a link in the description box for For Good from the musical Wicked. In both of these stories, we find the reconnection. For both, there is a sense that reconciling is not only for themselves, but because they see the benefit for the wider community. Esau and Jacob were leaders of the whole tribes of people. Hundreds of individuals looked to them for guidance, and neither wants a battle or the loss that could come from digging up past wounds. In 2020, NPR released an article, as have many other news organizations, telling of the deep divisions within the United States. According to the work done by Pew Research, people in the United States are stating that the divisions across political and belief lines are impacting more than they ever have at any time in their life. They're affecting who someone will befriend or date, where they spend their money, and how they perceive and judge individuals whom they've never even had contact with before. Reverend Nelson Johnson and Reverend Mark Sills have been activists for many years seeking what they call truth and reconciliation in the midst of trauma and division. Reverend Johnson and his wife Joyce began a truth and reconciliation commission in 2004 to help with the continued racial unrest in Greensboro, North Carolina. They gathered community members together to discuss what is now deemed the Greensboro Massacre. On November 3rd of 1979, a group of about 40 American Nazis and KKK members opened fire on a labor and civil rights march in Greensboro, killing five people and wounding 10 others. No one was ever held responsible for the violence And Johnson, along with other leaders, say that the wounds still create discord in the relationships within the city. Reverend Nelson's work in the city has allowed for some healing and some communications, but he still sees this type of process to be the steps necessary for continued growth. Reverends Nelson and Sills both believe that utilizing the model of truth and reconciliation cultivated by Nelson Mandela would allow for healing of some of our current division within our country. The important part of this work is that there must be truth-telling first. We cannot gloss over our realities or disagreements and expect them to just disappear. When we are unable or unwilling to tell the truth, then they say we will be unable to find reconciliation. We see this in our stories from today. In For Good, Glinda and Elphaba do not try to falsely portray their experiences with one another. They do not try to sugarcoat their stories of what has occurred or why they have disagreed. It is with this truth-telling that they are able to find genuine reconciliation. And the same is true for our scripture today. Jacob and Esau are not trying to hide what their history has been with one another. 
As a matter of fact, their history and its hard truths is what Jacob is so deeply concerned about in his meeting with Esau. But Esau has chosen that those truths can stand even with reconciliation. Where is God calling us to tell the truth and find reconnection with ourselves, our loved ones, a friend, or an acquaintance? I'll be honest, this scripture is a bit of a challenge for me. Being truthful about our history can always be hard as every person and every community and every organization has parts of our history we would rather not recount. And yet this story reminds us that God is inviting us into the open doors of grace by allowing us and asking us to acknowledge first where there are hurts and wounds that need to be healed. Grace, reconciliation, community healing will come with God's help when we are able to be honest with ourselves and one another about what needs to be healed. Let us be restored in God's love and God's grace through the infinite possibilities that they are before us. We appreciate your gifts and tithes to the ministry of the church and the work we do in the community. If you would like to give, please use this text to give number or you can find a link in our description box. Again, my name is Reverend Megan Berg. Thanks for listening to today's message as we continue to hear where God is calling us as a community and as individuals. Join us next week as we look at a less known biblical story about some midwives that we find in our Old Testament and their courageous acts alongside the musical Dear Evan Hansen. Be kind and do good this week.